Namaskar, everybody, and happy Deepavali. Bo invites you to the Gita for Yuva series in which we talk about the Gita and have discussions about it. I would personally like to explore more into it and you can now also join it on this occasion. My name is Rishi Mushti and we are going to continue on chapter 3 Karma Yoga. So Arjuna says basically, if, if as you say Krishna, man of knowledge is really superior to man of action, why do you advise me to take the path of action instead of knowledge? And, and uh, Krishna basically says that there are two types of people, the, uh, the purely intellectual and the physically active. He says that the path of knowledge is prescribed for the intellectual. Uh, why, where is the path of action is best um, for the physically dynamic. And he says basically that for Arjuna, uh, the physically dynamic is best for him. And he explains that these two are just mediums to the ultimate realization of oneself. So Arjuna says, again, you per, uh, perplex me, Krishna. Why should I not follow the direct and easier path to take the goal? And Krishna says, the path of knowledge is not the proper one for you. Um, the, the, dyna- the physically dynamic one is proper for you. You were born into uh, Kshatriya caste, so that's kind of your duty to uh, to be physically dynamic and fight. That's kind of what it is. So now Arjuna again says, Is the performance of an action without any concern for the result of it? Uh, the same thing is not doing an action at all. And, uh, and Krishna responds that that's not a very good question. Um, he basically says, then an action done with any desi- uh, without uh, any desire is a perfect. It's basically a perfect action. Uh, let's see. For example, you want to play games, right? Playing games is not necessarily a thing you have to do. It's something you're tempted to do. Uh, it's basically something you want the re- you want the re- you want the result out of it. The result out of that is going to have fun to enjoy, right? But to do an action flawlessly, perfectly, kind of means that you have to do it based on what your duty is, right? You have homework to do, finish that first. You have chores to do, finish that first. That's kind of, that's basically what he's trying to say. So basically, uh, Arjuna now asks again, is the performance um, of an action but not caring for what comes out of it, the result is that the same thing is not doing anything. It's the same thing as inaction. And Krishna says that's basically a very stupid question because uh, basically what Krishna says is an action done without any desire for the result is faultlessly perfect in performance. Um, but basically what he's saying is like, if you want to do gaming, for uh, example, right? Gaming is something you're tempted to do. You want the result out of it to have fun and enjoy, right? And while doing this once in a while is okay, right? He says the main your main priority it should be something that like your duty is. The the perfect action that you do is what your duty is. If you have homework to do, then don't do that first. If you have chores to do, then do that first, right? He also comes to say that inaction itself is barely not possible. It's barely, barely possible. Because every single Every single object, every single thing, cannot be uh, cannot be in a state of inaction. Because even when you even when you're just standing there, just staring at a wall, you're still staring at a wall. Wall, you're still thinking about something. Not you. Basically, Krishna is saying it's it's, um, it's almost impossible to live without not really thinking of something. When you and when you really think about that, that comes to be true. Because even when you're trying not to think about anything, you're still somehow thinking about something.
right you still somehow think about maybe something in front of you your eyes are still processing that meaning that goes to your brain that means the brain is still thinking if the brain stops working then you're just dead that's called inaction this is basically what he's saying it, then what krishna comes to say is all beings consciously or unconsciously are always active is basically what it is लोके स्वामी and um that's not really good for us and then krishna says no arjuna it is not so as i said earlier only those actions which are not prompted by desire right uh chain is down meaning the ones that uh des- ones that, we, that you desire the gaming for example those are the ones that kind of chain you down but the ones that are your duty the ones that you basically have to do uh the ones that are like maybe part of it like a, a daily thing that you do uh those don't is kind of what he's saying and now he uh, goes on to tell the whole story from the beginning he's saying in the beginning prajapati who is the creator of everything he created all the living beings beings um along with the ca- uh, capacity for a uh, yagna in each of them he blessed him and said may you increase with sacrifice yagna this sacrifice is not mean like the literally lighting the fire putting ghee chanting slokams right but uh it basically means like uh the to work with a selfless attitude in a spirit of dedication and wishing only for common welfare it's like a co um operative basically because Uh, sacrifice doesn't literally mean oh you take some ghee you put in the fire and swaha 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 that's it. all of that is somewhat a form of sacrifice it's not it's not really the only form of sacrifice it's not the main form of sacrifice the main form of sacrifice is the stuff you do like around us the main duties you perform so basically another thing he does is that krishna also says that basically not doing this right is kind of like a sin right if you remain idle most of the time right without ever carrying out your duty that that somehow becomes a sin and jan she he takes an example he says um nature for example right uh, look around and see mother nature at work does she not um eloquently proclaim to us in silence her spirit of constant sacrifice the sun sheds light the earth yields our needs the fire gives heat do they ever ask us for anything in return basically he says that the way nature acts that's the way we should act too nature is kind of like a um, a role model uh, for us to follow is kind of what it does they don't expect anything in return and that this is how he says that all these things that you see in nature those are unselfish actions and that's how he comes to uh, tell to arjuna that sacrifice is an unselfish action so then he goes back and he basically says is this path then to be pursued by all krishna and krishna says no not by all those who have already attained the highest position right like krishna himself they said yeah, then you don't uh, they don't need to do it because they already have the um, self realization of all that stuff they said they have nothing to gain by actions either for them the individually the, the individuality created by the ego has ended so therefore they do not depend upon anyone for anything they have gone beyond all these limitations okay that's like krishna they've gone way beyond all that they don't need that uh but then arjuna is kind of skeptical because krishna himself is one of these very learned men but arjuna is basically saying okay if you're these if you're one of these uh, learned men you are still a seeker of knowledge right you must discharge your duty in a spirit of dedication as an um offering at my feet the like kisa is basically uh then uh krishna basically uh, says that his case is kind of different because he 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 doesn't admit himself that he has gained all that knowledge basically he says janaka janaka for example janaka and other kings attain perfection only by the strict observance of their duties you should arjuna you know, follow the footsteps of those wise kings stand up conquer evil and bring happiness and security to others 
but Krishna is still convinced that Arjuna is not convinced. So he says, still you do not look convinced at the truth of my arguments. He says, all right, look at me, for example. You're asking about me, I'll tell you about me. He says, um, from my very birth, I've been living a, a life of pure selfless service. Like, established I am in the highest knowledge. It is immaterial to me whether I, I act or remain idle. Uh, he says, there is nothing to be gained or lost by me, by action or inaction. Still, I may engage in activities. Yes, at this very moment, I may not be working as your own charioteer, right? And Arjuna says, I understand Krishna perfectly well your argument. Now that I come to think about it, why should we strain at all in no such non-stop activities if you already gained that highest knowledge? And Lord Krishna says, that, okay, this is basically the source of your problem. This is, this is You came all the way to the source of the problem. He's saying the common people endowed with average uh, intelligence uh, mostly follow the great, right? They imitate the great, they act like the great, they have role models. Um, the role models are the great people. And uh, Krishna has many, many, many uh, role models today. Today we worship him as a god. He basically says, if he remains idle, then his act, then um, his followers will uh, will uh, kind of imitate him, and they will remain the same. If you think about it, if Krishna never uh, really ki uh, killed those demons when he was very young, if he never really went all the way to Kamsa's court and um, killed Kamsa, if he never actually did any of this, would we be worshiping him as a god right now? We would not. <laughs> Kind of like it is. So then, uh, one more thing is that he says that this e there's another ignorance. There's that ignorance that gets you um, attached to action. And then Arjuna says, okay, in what way, Krishna, does this ignorant man get attached to action? He says the ignorance of the nature of the self creates desires, meaning thinking about yourself, desires generate thoughts. Um, thoughts produce actions, right? We, in our ignorance, due to our arrogant ego, think that we perform, we accomplish, we succeed. Actually, the, um, the actions are accomplished by the organs of all in, of action in us. But our imperfect understanding, we consider that, um, that we are the doers. Uh, I'll give you a good example. So, basically what you're saying is like, our brain, right? Our brain just tells us uh, what to do. We don't enact it ourselves. Right. Sometimes, and, our, and most of the time, our brain is very, very um, stuffed with a lot of wrong things. Right. That's what our brain is. That's the nature of our brain. But our organs, our and everything inside of us, right, are telling our brain that okay, we have to move up and do something. Right. And um, the brain finally says, like, okay, 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 do whatever you want. Okay, although they don't really want to. Uh, uh, a good example of this is you are you're doing you're watching TV. You, Okay, it's like nine o'clock and you haven't done your homework yet, and and your whole body is telling you just go do your homework. But your brain is like, I need to watch this TV. Five minutes more. Ten hours later, hold on. Five minutes more. Hey, get ready for school. <laughs> so um, uh, basically, yeah. So another another good example in real life is that an actual architect, right? Well, let's not say an architect, a host, like a. a yeah, a host, right? He, let's say he wants to build a super tall sc skyscraper, a huge building, right? He just pays people to do it. He doesn't, he doesn't like uh, draw the actual uh, um, architecture. He doesn't do any of that. He just pays them and says, "Do it," right? He he is not the actual one who is building it. It's the workers who are doing it for him, right? But in his own ignorance, he's saying, "Oh, I made it." You know, I mean, look at many structures, right? When you say, like, oh, this king built this great structure. Did he really? Did he take everything from mud to clay, fold, literally fold it and, like, literally, like, model everything? He didn't do that. Most of the time, he didn't even see the, how the building was constructed. He just paid money and said, build it, right? The workers are basically our body parts, right? He says, the wise man should not confuse the ignorant one uh, with these arguments, for the latter would not understand. He says, and how then can an ignorant person transform to like a man of highly attained knowledge? And he says, by dedicating yourself to the service of the world with pure selfless actions, right? Like, uh, let's say for that, let's say, go back to the building example. Yeah. If that if those guys are building a skyscraper, right? The least you can do is come by watch how you do it, right? Uh if you're building for it, then you're probably the one who should draw the design, okay? And although you, you're you probably not going to build the whole skyscraper, that's all practically impossible for one man, you can still uh, be a part of it. You can still be, you can 
like you can be at work from seven to nine nine a day you can still take that mod you can still fold it into bricks you can still put it in all the way uh even if it's a very very little it's still uh, a big part to the actual structure so that's basically what it says is selfish actions can bring you from ignorance to a highly attained uh, man and he says from free from uh, every selfish motive at the feet of the supreme such actions purge of selfish motives and hopes are not done by the individual the individual being is then only a medium through which the uh, divine power manifests itself through all of its actions so when it says medium he says that it's just like one of the ways to communicate the uh, the divine sayings to the supreme therefore arjuna you can thus be, uh, become an instrument of the supreme to work out his will okay because uh, us humans on earth right um we are trying to create the selfless world right god is trying to god is basically kind of like uh using us he's uh, using us as a tool to um, spread selflessness uh, throughout the world right and obviously uh it's not that good it's not really that simple a lot of humans are still not the most selfless but uh i guess now we're in kali yuga so that's how it is um so then uh, arjuna says then why do men reject this great and valuable truth and court their own downfall what can they not follow your teachings discharge their duties and gain happiness now and forever right uh so basically our, uh, what um krishna says is that okay well he goes like sitting with like you know if you finish your homework you're going to get a good grade right if you know if if you know you're going to study on the test you know you're going to get a good grade right you know that you you know that yourself no matter how bad uh no matter how low you stoop you still know that right but your brain thinks differently your brain says let's let's wait let's not do this for a while he says it's going to be super boring right um because they focus on the process itself he says basically when a being is born he is born with certain latent uh, impressions tastes and inclinations instincts basically um which he had acquired by his actions in his previous births his present behavior and attitude to life are mostly governed by past actions vasanas and uh, this is kind of like a butterfly reaction or, or, or i should say chain reaction when you finish your homework right if you, if you don't finish your homework you go back to school tomorrow and you say the teacher asked where your homework and you said i didn't do it right you're going to you're probably not going to get a very good grade right it's like a cause and effect kind of thing so then he says even as an honest seeker of the highest truth ask influenced by these impressions arjuna then asks are not all of us then uh, independent to your to follow your teachings to improve to perfect ourselves if a man's nature vasana is so powerful on him as you say uh, do not your teachings become practically useless so then lord krishna says he can raise himself uh, if he masters his senses that produce attachment and hatred he should uh, try not to become a slave uh, of his own sensitive senses <laughs> uh it is the senses that hurl him uh into this headlong into the um hell of suffering it's basically what he's saying uh, your senses control you right your your, your senses are saying like oh i had to watch tv and not going to do my homework yeah, your senses that say oh i'll i'll figure all this out later they want to do you sarcasm and uh, procrastination he's saying that most people today they uh the their senses are the ones that govern them right but they must be the one that governs themselves or <laughs> these selves literally meaning the so um, the senses don't have control over you you have control over your senses is basically saying, saying if you can uh, if you can uh, get up not be lazy if you can uh, if you can get control of your senses then that is already one step forward so he says um in this context you must uh, understand that no duty is superior or inferior to any other duty your duty is the best for you for your own progress for you in your spiritual path right it's not saying like uh, for example if you if you're a brahmin right take a brahmin compared to a shudra right uh, a brahmin is a well what is their duty to pray to learn right to spread knowledge that's what it is a brahmin does that the shudras on the other hand right they 
uh, they pay farms right uh, they do kind of things like that which is very hard uh, when you compare the two the shudras are the one that have a lot more effort and a lot more labor done into it than uh, brahmin effort right but it's still but uh, uh, it's still brahmin um, it's uh, brahmin duty to do what they're doing and shudra duty to do what they're doing right so there's no inferior or uh lower it's no inferior lower or higher duty at all it's all the um, it's it all just depends on what you're supposed to do right so arjuna he says if when he says into in real life example he says arjuna uh, a kshatriya like you born to fight and rule will fail if you were to take up the duty of a brahmana just study teaching and meditation uh so i think he's basically just saying that arjuna is a terrible learner <laughs> but um uh, in, a, in a real life example basically what he's saying is that uh, if if a physically dynamic person right if you're doing athletics gym all that stuff your whole life right and you went suddenly to uh, to compete in this like worldwide national uh like um competition about uh, spelling bee or something it's not a very it's not a very like uh, likely chance that you're going to succeed in that and uh Krish, and then um arjuna says i find even though one tries his best to run away from evil krishna he cannot do so sometimes he is drawn to it right because as, again as i said from that example you, your brain knows your brain knows that you're not supposed to be watching TV when you have homework to do, right? But you just get drawn to the TV, right? So Krishna says, yes, that is true. Uh, to a certain extent, all beings have in themselves a dual, a dual personality. All have good and evil in us. So you have two sides each. Found in varying proportions, right? When, uh, So all of us have good and evil in it, okay? But uh, it depends on how much evil and how much good you put in it right if you have uh, milk and uh, blue food coloring or any take milk and juice okay milk is the good juice is the evil okay both let's say there are 10 cups all those individuals have the same will, will both have good and evil in them right but it depends how much you pour into them it depends on how much you pour into them that defines their uh, personality and characteristic so both of all of us have good and evil in them but it um it, we basically rely on how much good and evil we have in us so um and one good nature prompts one uh, to think good thoughts to perform good actions the evil nature uh, pulls the same one into the opposite direction right uh so basically what uh what it is is like i'm like say i'm uh, like a good action right Let's say you're cleaning the swimming pool. The swimming pool right before me, beautiful, right? Pretend it has a lot of moss in it, uh, and um, your dad tells you to go clean it, right? Um, and let's say there's like a gaming tournament, a game, a online gaming tournament that you want to take part of. It's in three minutes, but your dad just told you to clean the pool because it's really mossy and it had not been cleaned in ten months. So um, basically, it's like you you have to you still have to clean the pool, right? Instead of going to the your, your on whole gaming thing and that's the ignorance that, uh, that creates you because whatever good you do right you you're gonna go clean the pool you're gonna do you're gonna load them on you're going to help others in need right your evil side basically says hey, hey, hey what are you doing all this instead you can just do gaming right it's just do that right that it'll always happen right uh um like every and almost everything you do every good thing you do if you're in school right you you'll study your best you'll take a test right and although you would really like to succeed in the test your eels are you would much rather uh, be in your home watching tv than studying for a test right but you still have to so basically says this lower nature is always known as ignorance it breeds desires which in their way create anger like uh you you have to go study instead of doing gaming right that evil evil side infuriates you that makes you angry you say hey, why can't i do this why am i studying here right the test isn't even until like day after tomorrow or something and it is this vicious cycle good evil good evil right i can if you've ever heard of yin yang it's kind of like that good evil good evil come uh, it's like this um whole switch kind of thing this is a vicious cycle um 
that does all this mischief in uh, in man desire is at the root of our evils and is our greatest enemy every bad thing we do is for desire every single every single bad thing we do is caused by desire um even uh, even many good things are still caused by uh, desire but when you when you take a look at bad things right uh hmm. let's say uh yeah let's just take the regular example you're watching tv you're gaming right um you still know like you are not supposed to do that but you do it anyway right that is desire you you want you want to do gaming right um if you're like yeah if you're watching tv that's your desire you want to do that right all these evil things are prompted by desire itself if you get rid of desire which is very 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 hard by the way um then that cuts out all the problems right if you build a if you build like a long um long tower of jenga bricks right and uh, or oh yeah let let's just say like um you put a, a very strong base okay and you put like a a big tower in front of it right and um let's say that big tower is like all the evil stuff right you try to take that off but taking that off is very hard if you take out that base if you take out the base itself the whole tower will fall and that's basically what you want the whole that base is desire and you're trying to take that out so that the evil will fall will drop over and it will break so arjuna says uh, what are ways of um, attacking and uh, destroying the desire urges in us which as you say are our greatest enemy he says this ruthless enemy desire krishna says resides in us carrying criminal activities with the help of uh, equipments of perception uh, gnana indriyas and the instruments of action karma indriyas at our mental and intellectual uh, levels right this is an, uh, again coming back to the senses thing and this controls your senses but you need to take control of your own senses instead of la- letting that evil take control of your senses right so then arjuna is like okay please tell me the secret strategy for this total conquest of desires and then krishna says you see man is made up the physical body senses the mind and the intellect beyond all these the greatest principle of all the pure atman the pure soul shines knowing thus the greatness of atman identifying yourself with the ever pure self arjuna conquering the de- uh, the dangerous devil desire in short govern the mind by the intellect right you have to govern your own mind one who has become one with the self the lord of lords in him all desires are completely at rest forever uh if you watched last time i may i put that cup analogy where he, you can take all of the cups um there's all the lives in there all the waters in there you put it into one bowl that one bowl is it atman and uh, of knowledge of sankhyas and the path of action of yoga which is what this whole chapter is about and uh that's that's all i have to say